So in the last video, we learned the difference between the standard state delta G versus this non-standard state delta G. We know when we're at standard state concentrations and conditions, the free energy released equals the standard state delta G. However, when we're in non-standard state conditions, the free energy released under these non-standard state conditions equals the non-standard state delta G. And again, we talked about this in the previous video. I have a link of it below. So if we have these non-standard state concentra concentrations, how do we determine the non-standard state delta G? How do we determine how much free energy is released under these non-standard state conditions? Well, we know the non-standard state delta G. We can solve that using this equation. So if we want to find the free energy released under these non-standard state concentrations, the non-standard state delta G, we need to know the standard state delta G. So we need to know how much free energy was released under standard state conditions. We need to know the ideal gas constant, the temperature, and the reaction quotient. And we know it's this reaction quotient that has a big impact on the non-standard state delta G. So these current concentrations, which again determine the reaction quotient, has a big impact on how much free energy is released. Under a certain reaction quotient with certain concentrations, we have a certain amount of free energy released. Under different concentrations with a different reaction quotient, we'll have a different amount of free energy released. But something really important to realize is the amount of free energy that's released. Really what's important is comparing the reaction quotient versus this reaction's equilibrium constant. So for simplicity, I'm, I'm really making this simple, but let's say this reaction, for simplicity, happens to have an equilibrium constant of one. So for example, this could represent equilibrium conditions, where again, we plug them into this equilibrium equation and we would get an equilibrium constant of one. So this reaction has an equilibrium constant of one. So now if we have these current conditions, we'll have a certain reaction quotient. And based on where that reaction quotient is compared to the equilibrium constant tells you about how much free energy is released. If we have a reaction quotient that's very far away from the equilibrium constant, the, this value will have a very large magnitude of a delta G. However, if the reaction quotient is very near the equilibrium constant, this reaction will have a very small magnitude of a delta G. So what do I mean? So, so let's do some examples. And something really neat is you can use this trick where essentially you create a number line where it gets, as you go to the right, the values get higher. But what you do is you, again, this reaction has an equilibrium constant of one. So you put that equilibrium constant in the center of the number line and then going to the right gets larger and going to the left gets smaller. So we create this number line. And again, with the equilibrium constant in the center. Now, knowing this, we can use this as a trick to determine how much free energy is released. For example, let's say we have these conditions. Let's say we have these non-standard state conditions. How much free energy is released? Is a lot of free energy released? Is this a very negative delta G? Or is this a very positive delta G? Well, again, remember, if we can find the reaction quotient of this reaction and compare it to the equilibrium constant, we can determine how much free energy is released. So under these non-standard state concentrations, if we were to find the reaction quotient of this reaction by, again, just plugging the, these concentrations into this reaction quotient equation, we'd get a reaction quotient of 1 over 100. So in our number line, we'd plug that. 1 over 100 is 0 0.01. So now we know where our reaction quotient is relative to the equilibrium constant. So we know this current reaction quotient is much smaller than the equilibrium constant. So the neat trick about this number line is you can use this number line and see that the reaction quotient wants to go towards equilibrium. These non-standard state concentrations, this reaction quotient wants to go towards equilibrium. So we see, based on the number line, this reaction quotient wants to go to the right towards equilibrium. So now we know this reaction wants to go to the right towards equilibrium. So under these current conditions, it wants to go towards equilibrium, so therefore goes this reaction goes to the right, creating more products, in its way towards equilibrium. And that makes sense because we know at equilibrium, we have even amounts of products and reactants. So if we have these concentrations where we have more reactants relative to products, it makes sense that this reaction wants to go to the right to create more products. So therefore we have even amounts of products and reactants and therefore an equilibrium constant of one. So we see in this situation, how far the, the reaction quotient is from the KQ. So the reaction quotient is not at the equilibrium constant. So therefore we know this reaction releases free energy. But now let's do another example. Let's say we have these conditions. Under these conditions, how much free energy is released? Well, again, first step, we know this reaction has an equilibrium constant of 1. So now we need to note the reaction quotient. And if we were to find the reaction quotient under these conditions, again, we just use this equation. We just plug in these current prevailing concentrations. And again, that will spit out the reaction quotient. So these current conditions have a reaction quotient of 1 over a million which again gives us a value of roughly this small value. 
So now we know under these conditions, we have this very small reaction quotient. So now we're really far away from the equilibrium. So therefore, this reaction really wants to go towards the right, towards equilibrium. So therefore, the, again, this reaction we see based on the number line, this reaction wants to go to the right. So we know this reaction wants to go to the right towards equilibrium. And again, that makes sense because we know at equilibrium, we have even amounts of products and reactants, and that's why we have a ratio of one. So under these situations where we have a lot more reactants than products, we, it makes sense that this reaction wants to go towards the right, towards equilibrium. But so again, we see the reaction quotient is really far away from the equilibrium constant. So a really key point is the further away the reaction quotient is from the equilibrium constant, the more free energy that's released. So this reaction would have a very large negative delta G because the reaction quotient is very far away from the equilibrium constant. However, that it, initially with this reaction quotient, that before reaction with this initial uh, reaction quotient would have a very small negative delta G because again, it, the reaction quotient was pretty close to the equilibrium constant, so it had a very small negative delta G. However, these conditions have a very small reaction quotient that's very far away from the equilibrium constant, so therefore it has a very large negative delta G. And that's just something you need to be familiar with. This non standard state delta G, all that matters is the reaction quotient relative to its equilibrium constant. And if, you, if the current concentrations have a reaction quotient that's very far away from the equilibrium constant, it releases a lot of free energy. So let's do some other examples. Let's say we have this situation. Let's say we have these current concentrations. What's the non-standard state delta G? Well, again, we plug in the reaction quotient. We find the reaction quotient by plugging in, in these concentrations, and we would find the reaction quotient to be around 100. Again, based on the way this equation works, and we know we multiply those, and so we would get a reaction quotient of 100. So again, we know the equilibrium constant is 1, which again is at the center, and we know we have a reaction quotient of 100. So plugging in our reaction quotient in this number line, we'd see the reaction quotient is much larger than the KQ. So again, we know we want to go towards equilibrium. So therefore, we know this reaction wants to go towards equilibrium. So under these conditions, this reaction wants to go towards the left towards equilibrium. We see that's how the number line is. So we know under these conditions, this reaction wants to go towards the left towards equilibrium. Because again, it's the same idea. We know the equilibrium constant is 1. So we know at equilibrium, we have even amounts of products and reactants. So therefore, if we have a lot more products relative to reactants, it makes sense that this reaction wants to go towards the left. We said it wants to go towards the left towards equilibrium. Because as it goes to the left, it makes more reactants relative to products. And eventually, it'll keep on going until we have even amounts of reactants and products, so therefore we'll be at equilibrium. So this reaction has, a, a, again, a certain delta G. But again, something important, I know this is complicating, but the convention is when thinking of this delta G, we know this reaction wants to go toward, towards the left. So therefore going towards the right would be unfavorable. So therefore going in this direction would have a positive delta G. And that's the convention. Whenever we're talking about the delta G, we're talking this delta G when asking what is this delta G, the non-standard state delta G, we're asking this reaction going to the right Going to the right, what is the delta G? And that's just the convention. So again, we explained this reaction wants to go in this direction. So therefore, that would be negative delta G. So therefore, this reaction going in this direction would be a positive delta G. So, so this has a positive delta G. But let's do another example. Let's do one last example. Now, let's say we have these conditions, this, these current conditions. Again, we can find the reaction quotient. Again, the same idea, find the reaction, reaction quotient. We would get a reaction quotient of a million. So we would plug in our reaction quotient of a million. And now we see our reaction quotient is much larger than the KQ. So in this situation, the reaction really wants to go towards the left. It strongly wants to go towards the left. So again, this reaction we know wants to go towards the left. It strongly wants to go towards the left, and it makes sense. Because we know at equilibrium, there are even amounts of reactants and products. So therefore, under these conditions with this reaction quotient, this reaction would strongly want to go towards, towards the left until it has even amounts of reactants and products, and therefore we're at equilibrium. So therefore, we know this reaction strongly wants to go towards the left. So therefore, when determining the non-standard state delta G, remember, this is asking, going in this direction, what's the non-standard state delta G? So in this situation, we have a very positive delta G. We know it very strongly wants to go towards the left. So therefore, going towards the right would be very unfavorable. So therefore, it had a very positive delta G. So therefore, the point is, it's the reaction quotient. It's this reaction quotient 
relative to the equilibrium constant that determines the delta G. And we see the reaction quotient is close to the equilibrium constant. It has a very small delta G. However, the further the reaction quotient is from the KQ, the equilibrium constant, the larger the negative delta G. If we have a reaction quotient that's very far away from its equilibrium, it will release a ton of free energy. It will release a lot of free energy because it really wants to go towards equilibrium. And again, if the reaction quotient is larger than the equilibrium constant, we know again, if for example, the lar the farther away the equilibrium the farther away the reaction quotient is from the equilibrium constant, the larger the magnitude of the delta G. And again, when the reaction quotient is larger than the equilibrium constant, it's a positive delta G. So again, and again, we explain that. So really, it's when determining the free energy, how much free the non-standard state delta G of this reaction, really we need to know the, react the equilibrium constant and we need to know the current reaction quotient and compare them. And something else important to realize is, let's say we had these conditions. Let's say, let's say we had a reaction quotient and we had conditions like this. If we have these conditions, what's the free energy? How much free energy is released? Well, clearly, if we were to plug in these values, under this current reaction quotient, these current conditions, plug in these values, we get a reaction quotient of 1. So therefore, the reaction quotient is 1. So therefore, we're at equilibrium. So therefore, we're at equilibrium. So therefore, no free energy is released. No free, it's not negative delta G going in this direction or this direction. We're at equilibrium. The reaction quotient it, we're, we're, our reaction quotient equals the equilibrium constant, so we're at equilibrium, so therefore there's no free energy that's released. So the key point is it's this reaction quotient, the current reaction quotient compared to the equilibrium constant, that determines how much free energy is released. And the farther away the reaction quotient is from the equilibrium constant, the more free energy that's released. And again, again, if for, in this situation, the reaction quotient being 1 equaling 1, so therefore we were to plug in this reaction quotient here, we the with the reaction quotient of one we would plug that in the natural log of one is zero so this would just be zero so this multiplied by zero would be zero so this entire side term would be zero so now we would see this 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 delta g equals the standard state delta g and that makes sense that makes sense because we're at standard state conditions so it makes sense that this delta g would equal the standard state delta g it, it makes sense so again the point is when we're at when we're at when we're at KQ, and again, when we're at uh, standard state conditions, essentially that will always create a reaction quotient of zero of, of one, which makes this entire term zero. So therefore, this free energy, this non-standard state delta G equals the standard state delta G because we're at standard state conditions. So that makes sense that the amount of free energy released in this situation equals the standard state delta G.